There's a new epidemic sweeping the world, and it's not a virus, it's stress. This is a real concern for health and social care workers. In fact, the health and safety executives say that workers in health and social care have some of the highest rates of illness due to stress, anxiety and depression. When people are stressed, they usually don't treat themselves or others well. They tend to self-medicate to cope with coffee, colas and energy drinks by day and a couple of drinks and a sleep aid at night. They overeat, or they don't eat, or they eat the wrong things, and exercise quickly drops off their to-do lists. When someone is stressed, they often take their troubles out on other people too. This can manifest as a quick temper at work, angry or impatient responses, or an attitude of, if I'm suffering, everyone else suffers. Does this all sound too familiar? This is not a problem health and social care can ignore. Aside from the financial implications and the impact on sickness absence, stress can also contribute to accidents, errors and poor performance. If you're unable to look after yourself, it's unlikely you'll be providing safe, high-quality and compassionate care to the people you support. The tricky thing about stress and the anxiety that comes with it is that it's an absolutely necessary emotion. Our brains are wired in a way that makes it difficult to take action until we feel at least some level of this emotional state. So there's no escaping stress or magic pill to get rid of it. To beat the negative side of stress, you have two choices. Reduce the strain or boost your ability to weather its effects. Cutting pressure is ideal, but frankly unlikely. So it makes more sense to focus on improving your mental and physical ability to process stress. This course will show you how.